Hi, hi, it's me, Chio. Welcome. Today we are back for another episode of the Smart Money Woman, and today we are going into episode 12, which for the book is the final chapter in the book, but for the TV series is not the final episode. Now, today's topic is becoming a smart money woman. So, yes, like I said, is the conclusion in the book, anyways, is the conclusion of the story. So this chapter is more like a summary or like last minute info on whatever has been happening in the story so the chapter starts off with zuri on vacation with shola in south africa and it's supposed to be this nice relaxed vacation but like it feels that way but at the same time we're led to believe that this is also a work vacation for shola and i don't know i just think that for the first trip they have together it should be completely separate from work now i don't know how that works for most people in the world if something like you actually bother about because he's actually making time for her on the vacation but still i'd rather know that if i'm traveling it's for just me and the person and not just because there's something else going on so that's how the vacation goes there she's we're just in zuri's mind and she's reminiscing over everything that has happened and we sort of see her talk about the, her last, her recent time at work because she's been like contemplating on expanding her role in her work life and just growing as a working person. And we know that things are going well for her. She's been able to secure the proposal she made, the business idea for her organization that she made and it's going well. So she's just like in basking in the aftermath of things moving on smoothly and Zuri seems really happy. She seems secure in her work life. She seems secure in her relationship. Her issue with Shola has been completely sorted. So everything is going on fine for her. But I can't help but feel like this chapter is a bit empty because this is like the conclusion of everything. And we're seeing like how I look at her, the life she's lived, that of her friends. And, and I know that the book didn't really delve deep into the other characters lives or we didn't really see things that much from their perspective but still the drama in their life are more serious than series so i feel like we should have seen more story before it was concluded meanwhile all we are seeing is that after everything that you've been seeing throughout the book leading up to the tragedies to the tragedies at Deisra faced and Ladin faced that we should have seen like more parts of them solving the issue before like they came out on the other side or they were close to out on the other side but all we see is just really thinking oh their friend her friends are making it now they are sorting out their problems and it just kind of leaves the, their story hollow like their story wasn't even important in the first place so that's how i feel about it and like throughout this yes again it's mostly been about zuri like that's what we that's what's who the main character is even though the story itself hasn't felt that way we know that the book is about zuri and her financial journey but the characters her friends are also important so i feel like the ending shouldn't have been focused on her and shola on vacation because even if shola helped her in her life he's not like the main thing she was after so we should have seen a different kind of conclusion in the book but that's just like my personal opinion and yeah, that's pretty much how the book ends. Now, moving on from here, we go into the episode 12. And I'm wondering, like, how are we going to, how am I going to do this? How am I going to review the 13th episode without having a 13th chapter to compare it to? And knowing that the 13th episode is supposed to at least match the 12th chapter because those are both the conclusion um, points. But as I open the last episode, episode 12 to watch, I realized that the episode is way shorter and I find out that there was like a production thing, something happened that made that episode not to be like a full episode. So I don't know if there was like later a full episode released, but because of it's not available anywhere, like the last time I checked it was not available anywhere, I believe like that's all we get. So it means that in order to give a proper review, I had to watch both the episode 12 and episode 13 at the same time to get 
the final story so it all worked out in the end for me anyways and i guess for you too so the episode 12 starts off with zuri at shola's place and they're on like a casual date and they're playing video games and all that and to me it felt stiff at first and everything but that's not my main issue my main issue is that during this date they start a conversation which i believe was about zuri's life or her financial life i can't remember the details but the main point is shola kept cutting her off i'm like why why are you cutting her off you you're supposed to be listening to her at that point and i just i don't know if it's just me but if i'm talking don't cut me off like let me finish what i'm saying then you respond it doesn't matter if what i'm saying is wrong it doesn't matter if you have something else to add let me finish my statement then you respond that's how it works but no he just talks over her and we're supposed to believe that this is like a romantic scenario and he's not like even talking over her like out of anger or annoyance he just happens to be the person that talks over someone else okay that's shola for you but anyways yeah that happens and like he eventually asks her about a question because she's they still haven't gone for Aladdin's father-in-law's funeral so she's talking about going for it and he wants to go with her and it's supposed to be like this romantic gesture and i don't know i don't know if like a funeral is the best time to say let me officially meet your friends Funerals are not romantic, whether it's like a death of someone young or a celebration of life of someone old. There's nothing romantic, there's nothing fun about funerals. So I don't know, like this is second or third time it's happening in the series. I don't know if this is what people do in real life too. The people actually request to go for funerals, not nay. Oh, I know this is a tough day for you, so I want to go with you and support you, eh? but more like I want to show everybody we're a couple, so let's go for this tragic event together. I don't know. I've never done it. I hope that doesn't happen to me in that scenario. I hope that's not the reason someone wants to go <laughs> to a funeral with me. Well, okay, let's assume that happens for you guys that actually do go on dates and I don't know that. So after like this gesture, there's this like whole opening of emotions and talking and all that and Shola tells Zuri that he loves her and like that's a grand gesture that's a big thing to say those are big words to say I have to be willing to back them up if you say those words and I guess people do fall in love fast people do I just have like a thing of saying it so early like how sure are you i like always put like a huge question mark when someone says the words too early it's like are you sure or are you just like in your feelings in the heat of the moment like take a breather then think about it before you say the words that's how i feel about it and yeah that's like they're not like in this romantic atmosphere and from there we go into adesua and soji's life so Adisha comes home from work and Saji is there, he's prepared like dinner, he's prepared like flowers and candles or something like that. And like I'm wondering like what is Saji's game here? What is Saji? What does he want to ask her for? He's never done anything romantic for her since they got married at least. Maybe before they got married that's how he got her in the first place. But since they got married, my knowledge is he's never done anything romantic for her. So I'm just wondering throughout what is his game? What does he want from Adisha? Why is he being so nice? Why is he apologizing for the problems he's had? And I'm just there holding like holding my breath, waiting for the other shoe to drop. And in that scene, it doesn't. So I'm just there left speechless. Like I know, like I know that it's not even like surgery is changing. Like I know that cannot even be the story. But I am still shocked seeing that scene not lead to anything else in that moment okay so adesha and Sergi are doing their love thing and they show the other scene of zuri and shola also doing their love thing and i'm wondering why is everyone doing love here and biting people's necks like what is what's going on please if you move on please please i feel like i'm tired <laughs> yes i'm here so like the night is over and then we finally see the other shoe drop because the next morning we find out that Sergi 
has like a bill he hasn't paid and it's like a huge debt that and Dexo is already covering like half of it or probably even more than half of it and he only has like one part to cover and he's refused to pay for it so now she's questioning on it and he's now like angry again and shouting at her about it and that's where the episode ends because of the whole technical error or whatever that happened to stop that episode from being distributed fully so now i had to go over to episode 13 to see what actually happened so that scene it doesn't continue from that scene which makes me wonder like what really happened did they like cut did i miss miss something or i don't know anyways the episode starts off with a day at a store and she has to like buy something for the house or something like that and her cards get keep getting declined and she goes home to find out what's happening because apparently like all the money was taken from the from her bank account she goes home only for her to find out her husband has traveled with everything he owns and all her money so yes so j just robbed his wife which is a new low it's a very new low so he's running away with all their money so of course adesha is visibly distraught and she's just taking everything in and her friends are there to comfort her because this is too much news for one person to accept that your husband the man you've devoted your life to the person you love so 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 much did this dirty thing like he just robbed you mistreated you and just ran away and at this point like honestly i was close to tears i had to fight those tears to stay back in because different stuff with adesa's life then later on adult life even like lara's life like the first stuff moved me in this series but nothing brought me close as close to tears as this particular scene where it looks like adesa has just it's just done she doesn't know what else to do and she just stuck as she's done I was dancing. Don't ever let me hear you say that. And I'm just there, like holding back my tears because I'm not going to let the smart money woman make me cry. So after the scene with Adesua in tears and her friends giving her as much comfort as they could offer and trying to figure out if it's even possible to get the money back, we see like Lara's own life because now Lara has gone back home and everything and her brother and mom are in the house and it's like she finds out that the school fees money she she made to this money she gave her brother to pay his fees for his final oh my god final semester in university like very final semester that he took this money to go pay someone to help him get an in into some football things so he could get like drafted or whatever and the person duped him basically the person ran away with the money and that's like the thing if you're if you're duping someone for something you likely would get duped if you're like looking for the easy way and all that kind of stuff out so lara is angry with this because this money was worked for she didn't need to give it to him but because of like guilt and everything just like guilt she doesn't need to feel but like everything we know like clara goes through she decides she's first like sponsoring her siblings through school when her mom is like an able-bodied woman who could do something so she's first like sponsoring the family and her brother is taking it for granted and now he's just taking this money and just giving it to someone else for a different purpose from what he said he needed this money for so technically he stole from her which she points out and She's like angry and she like tells them to leave her house and they're not listening and she's just like you people have like stolen from me and all that and like lara is just me brought to life in tv i would react the same way this is like almost like 100 percent who i am i i get like kind of like stealing from me mm -mm. deceiving me mm -mm. and i'll do my best to hold it in i'll do my best to, like i don't like burst out for random stuff but like when I'm ready to, mm -mm, you don't want that. You don't want that. So it's like I love seeing Lara because it's kind of like we're seeing her and like on TV she's not like the character she has is not seen as a problem. So I can just relate to it so much. Like we're not hundred percent the same or anything, but I can relate to the way she thinks and the way she responds to things a lot. I love Lara.
okay so lara is dealing with that now she has to come to terms with what her family truly is to her what she's willing to do what she can't do where she draws the line and that's like the the journey she has to deal with and we also find out then we go to zuri and shola and whatever they're doing and we find out that they actually did argue about the car issue like that's part of the stuff we missed in the technical error point so we don't see the arguments happen we don't see when they stop talking to each other but we find out in tv series by this episode that they had actually argued about it and my and this argument must have happened after he told her he loved her which makes me think at least like even the lines are the same in the book how do you tell someone you love them and in the same breath tell them that you can't date a broke girl you knew who i was before you dated me you knew what i was trying to solve before you dated me so if this part of me isn't okay with you then how did you get to the point of loving me how it doesn't make sense you should like you knew so how like it makes no sense to me and this is another reason reason 1300 and whatever why i don't like shola you can't tell someone you love them then just say rubbish to them it makes no sense that means your words don't really hold value but at this point this in this episode we see i'm making up and everything so there are problems resolved yay now tammy is also sorting through her life and she's like in her business trying to like make things so much better more professional when she finds out just from one of her clients that the person who soji ran away with is chinasa which we already knew from the book but it's it's just the girl is nasty chinasa is like a devil she's like a little devil she honestly convinced this married man to ditch his wife and like do everything for her and the stupid man the stupid man blindly so blindly just bought into all that and stole his wife's money with no prospect no real prospects for his future i ran away with this small girl like i know i'm just like if maybe a year or something i don't know how old chinasa is but probably around the same age maybe she's just like a year younger than me in the tv series anyways but the character just i can't see her but anything else was a small girl because of just her attitude anyways my thing here is that my good thing here is that in the book when tammy talked about this gist and she like told the other friends about it in the book he made it seem like she was just like a gist mom girl she was just out to talk, talk to her friends about oh did you hear what's up which is very callous of her in the book but in the tv series she's talking to her friends about it out of like i'm so angry for her day so do you know she, if she's heard about it yet what do we say to her she actually really cares she's actually visibly furious that this kind of information is spreading and that is affecting a day to her this much and like yes this is this is a better way to talk about being a friend not the book tammy that was just like her only personality is just just that money and it's like that's very callous if you're going to put her in that same sphere when her friend's going through something so yeah i'm happy they switched that up for the tv series but from finding out that Sergi ran away with chinasa we also find out that the other guy that the other rich guy older rich guy that chinasa was with found out about what was going on and had Sergi arrested which means that Sergi probably blew all the money he already had and chinasa didn't care anymore and was able to convince the other guy that it was not her fault it was his fault and that's what got him into trouble so now he's in jail and like at this point is still angry about everything but like it's embarrassing it's embarrassing to know that the person you were you were with for this long could do something like that even if they loved you even if it's them there even if it's themselves they are embarrassing and hurting it still rubs off on you from as someone who has been with them or is with them so she's still annoyed by, by that but it also gives her like a sense of justice to know that this wasn't her fault this was just who the man was and he's getting his like due punishment for his actions and she didn't even have to lift a finger to inflict any justice or punishment herself 
and like his mom his ridiculous mom who was supporting all his bad habits and also all his insults and things right shows up at, at her house and security locks her out like she's not allowed to come into adixra's house because obviously it's adixra's house and the woman is like begging adixra and goes on her knees to beg her to help the son but even like in that conversation you can tell the woman still doesn't care about adixra she's being she's just so unremorseful and everything and adixra basically just gives it to her like gives it to her as good as she can like i'm so happy like at least i didn't like have to stoop down to her level to like be would i say rude or whatever but she actually just laid fast straight to her about what what type of woman she is and what type of her son and what type of son she has and like brushed her hands off their lives so good for you at this for standing your ground finally and for like finding your strength so these are like the journeys all the characters are going through and then we go like three months into the future and all the girls have gathered for um their dinner like the usual group friendship group dinner and like at date um and like zuri is just coming back from vacation so she went to south africa and while we didn't see see the vacation happen it doesn't give the same air of this was a business trip turned vacation so it feels more like after they fixed their issues they actually took time off because now they've both done things they want to do they've both grown in a relationship and now they've chosen to go on a vacation so it feels better it feels like a better way to show the story of um zuri and what's his name zuri and shola the highlight is not about their life, but you still see that they're growing. The highlight is now about the girl group. And they're all talking about how far they've come. Baden still has a lot of things to grow from, but she we've seen that the effort, the last minute effort her and her husband put in place did not leave them stranded. She's seen the silver lining in the clouds and everything. Like all the girls are just talking about what they've dealt with and how far they've come and how happy they are with their progress and it's just like a really nice moment and oh my god for such a dumb reason i actually feel like i'm about to cry like i don't even know why but like right now i feel like i'm about to cry because of the scene but it's like the girls are just talking and just for the fact that they've grown so much throughout this journey for the fact that some of them were like dealt heavy hands and were still able to fight through it and they still had like their friend group like to, they had each other to support each other and come out on the other side unscathed or as little as little hurt as possible and it's just such a beautiful moment and then the episode and the series in general concludes with them toasting to the support they have in each other as the smart money tribe and that is the end of the series that is the end of the book it's such a beautiful way to end it i appreciate this ending so much more than how it ended in the book and yeah this is like the conclusion of the whole story i still have one more video to make on the smart money woman where i'll give like a proper um view of how i felt about the whole experience reading and watching it and my thoughts on the characters and my thoughts on what happened in the story and yeah so that's the last video to explain from me on the smart money woman so that is it for today if you've liked this video don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe and also hit that notification bell so you never miss a thing thank you for watching see you next time bye